Hey there movie fans, welcome to the Blues of May. I'm going to show you the DVDs and Blu-rays that I've gotten over the month of May, of course. And uh, first up, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, two YouTubers from the UK. And they are Be Kind Rewind and Medicus Tattooey. Um, they have you know, great channels and, and a great collection. Uh, I believe Medicus Tattooey has a fantastic uh, Korean movie collection. So definitely go check that out. And um, yeah, go check out their channels and give them a sub. Be Kind Rewind and Medicus Tattooey. Okay, first up, I'm going to show you the DVDs. I only have two this time. And the first one is Dillinger. This is the 1973 version. Uh, this is actually the third Dillinger movie that I have in my collection. The other one is, uh, of course, um, Public Enemies, uh, you know, the Michael Mann movie. And I also have the, uh, the one from the 1940s with Lawrence Tierney, which is also very good. Lawrence Tierney, by the way, is, is uh, you know, the gangster boss from um, Reservoir Dogs, you know, uh, uh, Joe Cabot, that's the, his character's name. But that, that is a very good film, and it has a very insane death scene uh, towards the end. Um, you know, I, I, want, I want to tell you whose death scene it is, so this is going to be a little spoiler you don't want to hear it, you better skip this part, but it's the death scene of Harry Dean Stanton. I saw that it was absolutely insane. But a great film, great film, Dillinger. Um, yeah, written and directed by John Milius, like I said. And speaking of Milius, I also grabbed this documentary about his life and work. It says here, the true story of the greatest filmmaker you've you never know and you never knew I'm sorry and that's that's pretty much the truth I think he's a, I think he's a fantastic filmmaker a very underrated filmmaker and a very close friends of you know very famous filmmakers like Spielberg and George Lucas and Scorsese and um, you know merely is whenever Spielberg has a problem with a with a script with a scene or a dialogue he calls in Milius and he would fix it for him so he was kind of like you know the fixer or the go-to guy or you know the idea man but this is a fantastic documentary uh you know if you if you love documentaries about movies and about about movie makers definitely go check this out this has a lot of interesting stories and and anecdotes there is one uh that i really really like this um you know Millie has made a movie called um or he, he written the screenplay of a movie called The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean. And he wanted to direct that and he wanted Lee Marvin to play the lead. And Lee Marvin took the script to a bar and he was so drunk that he, when he left the bar, he forgot the script. And it was picked up by Paul Newman, who was there. And he read it and he loved it. And uh, it, it, you know... It, ended up being a Paul Newman movie directed by John Huston and uh, Mealy wasn't really uh, happy about that but um, yeah there's, there's a lot of great interesting anecdotes and um, it's quite unfortunate because Milius had uh, had a stroke uh, some time ago and his um, his ability you know to speak um, you know he, he has to learn to learn to speak again and there's one moment in this documentary where you can see him struggling to talk and it's very sad to see him like that because he, he always liked to talk, he always liked to tell stories and all that and uh, he cannot do that anymore, that's, that's pretty sad. But his, his writing skills is still intact, you know, his storytelling is still intact. And he has a script about Genghis Khan that he wanted to produce for, for the last 20 years and hopefully uh, he will succeed in that. But um, yet, yeah, go check this out. This is a fantastic documentary, Milius. There are rumors that there is also a director's cut 
of this uh, documentary with more interviews. Also an interview with uh, Quentin Tarantino, which oddly enough is not in this version. But you know, hopefully we will get to see the director's cut very soon. And here is another movie from John Milius. Uh, you know, he wrote and directed this. Well, no, Oliver Stone wrote this. Uh, Milius only directed it. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, which of course is a classic. And this is the uh, the UK Steelbook, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love the uh, the comic book style artwork, you know, especially on here. It looks really great. The sad thing about this is that you know, the, you know like I said, this, it is the UK um, release, and the UK Blu-ray is uh, cut. So what I've done is I already had the uh, the Dutch Blu-ray, which is completely uncut. So I, and I put the Dutch Blu-ray in here, and um, anyway, it's a beautiful steelbook and a great film. And here is another uh, project from Milius. Uh, there was, you know, totally coincidental, by the way. I didn't pick this up because I was in a Milius mood, although I was, but that wasn't the reason why I picked this up. I picked this up because I finally found it for a good price. Uh, Rome, the complete collection or the complete series. It only lasted uh, two seasons. They wanted to make more seasons, but uh, unfortunately, there was this, um, you know, this big fire which nearly destroyed the whole set, and uh, they decided to cancel the show. But uh, it is a great show. I've only seen the, the first season. I've never actually checked out the second one so very much looking forward to that okay next up are three uh, regular blue ways and the first one is possession by andre zolowski uh, this is incredible strange film but also a very fascinating film as well um, this is actually the, the second film that i've seen of zolowski I, the other film, the first Solarski film that I've ever seen is, um, what's the name again? L'Important Chez de Mer, I believe it was, with uh, Romy Schneider and uh, Klaus Kinski. Uh, I thought that was a great film as well. I also have two other films by Solarski, but I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, they are Shimanka and um, La Femme Publique. You know, I have the, uh, the DVD limited edition from Mondo Vision. And um, I also believe that Mondo Vision will be releasing a possess Possession uh, on Blu-ray in these limited edition packaging. Um, I believe there are two versions, one with the soundtrack and one without the soundtrack. You know, might pick it up. I, know, I don't know. There, there are limited edition uh, digi packs and all, or digi books. No, digi packs. But uh, yeah, this was a, a great, great film. It kind of remind me of early Cronenberg, you know, uh, The Brute, uh, in a way. But uh, yeah, great film. And Isabel Ajani, I thought she was, uh, she was incredible. I actually read that she has a very difficult time with this role. She was, you know, so much into the character that she. Um, it, it took a while before she began working on another film after this. I uh, also picked up Hitchcock. This was only 5 euros from Amazon.de. And uh, it was enjoyable. It wasn't, you know, a great film to be honest, but uh, I liked it. Uh, I enjoyed it as a Hitchcock fan. I thought uh, Anthony Hopkins was, uh, was great as, as Hitchcock. And Helen Mirren as his wife, um, Elma. <laughs> Almost forgot her name. You know, people tend to forget that Elma is as brilliant a filmmaker as Hitchcock was. Now everybody, every, we all agree with, that Hitchcock was a genius. But Elma, you know, she had that same genius as well. You know, when he's Hitchcock's movie would never be the same without the help of his wife, and uh, you know many people doesn't know that. I think they were a fantastic team together. But uh, yeah, entertaining movie, and the last one 
uh, the last regular uh, Blue Aid is uh, Dolls, which I've never seen before, and uh, I really liked it. I thought the uh, the special effects were really good. You know, the way those dolls came to life, uh, I thought it was very good. I was very entertained by it. Dolls. Okay, now it's time for stew books, and the first one is the UK stew book of The Wolf of Wall Street. Definitely one of my favorite films of this year. Uh, absolutely loved it. I thought it was incredible, and uh, and a very beautiful stew book as well. Much much better than the American one, which only has a, a picture of DiCaprio with the uh, with the microphone, you know. But this is much better. This is all embossed. There are rumors that there is a four-hour version out there somewhere, which still needs to be released. And um, I hope they do because I, I really love to see. I would I would love to see more of it. I would love to see a four-hour version of the Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know how. You know, like I said, it's rumors, so I don't know if it's true or not. But it, they also said that there's a. A four-hour version of uh, *Gangs of New York*, which apparently does not exist, but you know, hopefully there is, uh, because I I always love to see um, what the director originally had in mind, especially Scorsese. I mean, he is really one of my favorite directors. Brilliant film, absolutely brilliant. And the next stew book is also from the UK. That is *Nosferatu*. Um, this is the uh, the remake, uh, nothing on the back, which is a shame. But this is the remake by uh, Werner Herzog with uh, Klaus Kinski. Uh, that was filmed in my country, by the way. Uh, Delft, which is the name of the city. And this looks beautiful, especially on, on high definition. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to... To say which version I like most, this one or the original um, uh, F. W. Murnau version. Um, you know, I, I think I like both of them equally. But um, I'm also going to get the um, Werner Herzog uh, box set. But I'm still, I'm still hesitating which one I should get. Uh, I'm actually, I think I'm going to get the U. K. box set because that one is cheaper. Uh, the American box set has you know more material on them, more movies, I believe, and it also looks a lot more beautiful. But it's also more expensive, of course. But I don't know. I might end up getting both of them. But um, anyway, um, not for that too. The vampire. And the last steel book is. From uh, from the Netherlands, this is uh, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. As you can see, this is all embossed. And this is what you call this matte finish. I never knew how you <laughs> how you say that, but I believe it matte finish. And here's a look at the back. I haven't seen this one yet, though. But you know, I heard that it it was a mediocre movie, but still, you know, it looks entertaining. And uh, I I like to. The, uh, the previous Jack Ryan movies, so looking forward to checking this one out. And there's also some pictures on the uh, inside. And here's one with Kevin Costner. Okay, next up is the first of five digi books that I bought. And the first one is Sorcerer. Uh, fantastic film. It finally got the uh, treatment that is deserved now for a long time you only have this, this old dvd with a poor transfer but uh it you know it they finally restored it and remastered it and it looks absolutely fantastic and you know the, the second time that i saw this you know the first time of course was on that on that old dvd and the second time is is on this blu-ray and not only does it look better, it, I, I think the movie itself has also become better uh, because of the, uh, the restoration and all that. And um, it's a beautiful release. Here you can uh, here's a personal letter from uh, uh, Brilliant Friedkin, the director. 
And uh, let me take you, show you some of the uh, the pages here. Roy Scheider plays the lead. He was not um, Friedkin's first choice, by the way. Uh, there were a couple of other directors that he approached first, uh, like Steve McQueen and uh, Paul Newman, Gene Hackman, um, Chris Christopherson, I believe, and Robert Mitchum, but they all said no. Or at least McQueen said yes, but he wanted his wife, um, Ali McGraw, to be in it, but Freaking said no to that, so McQueen also said no to that. And Freaking kind of regretted that decision because he thought that Roy Schneider wasn't really um, you know, cast, very well cast in this film. I thought he was alright, but I would have loved to see McQueen in this film. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's like Nosferatu, it's difficult to say which version I like the most. Uh, the, you know, the the original version from France is called The Wages of Fear. I really loved that one, and I really loved this one as well. So difficult to to say which one is better. So you know, to me the the boat is good. Uh, next one is the Dutch Digibook of Saving Private Ryan. This is part of the Masterworks collection. Uh, they have other films like. Uh, Forrest Gump, for example, um, and this is, as you can see, this is a little embossed, also Tom Hanks' his name is embossed. Let's show the back here, which has a very nice picture. There's the Blu-ray. It is, it is written in, uh, in English, by the way. Spielberg at work. Very nice digital book and a fantastic film, of course. And also picked up the media book from Germany of Flesh and Blood by Paul Verhoeven. Uh, it's kind of sad because this is the last collaboration between Verhoeven and Rutger Hauer. They had so many fights and so many arguments while making this film that they you know, w never worked together again. Verhoeven was inspired by uh, The Wild Bunch. So you can, you can say that this is his version of The Wild Bunch. And the Wild Bunch is, is his, uh, there's a picture of Verhoeven there. The Wild Bunch is one of his favorite uh, movies, but he was a little disappointed by it because he expected a confrontation scene between William Holden and uh, Robert Wyant, uh, you know, who, their characters in the Wild Bunch, they were friends first, but they became enemies. And he would have loved to see a face-to-face, -face, um, you know, personal fight scene between those two characters. So he kind of created his his own confrontation between uh, Rutger Hauer and uh, Jack Thompson's characters. Uh, you know, they they became friends as well. You know, uh, allies, and then later on they became enemies. And um, he had the idea of a fight scene between Hauer and Thompson in a bad house and they were you know in in this tub and they don't what each of them did not know that they had this this knife hidden in, inside the water and they would talk first you know very slowly and then they pull out the knife and then they start fighting each other unfortunately that whole idea was um cancelled because the american financiers um they want to concentrate more on the love relationship between 
Jennifer Jason League and uh, this guy Tom Burleson I believe it was and that's just very much a shame I would have loved to see that that fight scene between them but still you know the, despite of that it's, it's, it's a very good film Flesh and Blood and it, this is a very nice release I believe this this has two versions you can see the DVD has the uh, 123 minute version and the Blu-ray has the 128 a minute version yeah great film flash and blood okay next is another German media book this is reanimated found this on eBay you know it was sold out but I found this for a good price actually on eBay brand new and uh, very nice release got two uh, two versions the unrated version it is the extended version and the unrated version is also on the uh, the DVD. Dr. Herbert West over there. It's a classic, isn't it? A great classic horror comedy. Reanimator. And there's a lot of uh, special features there as well. And I also picked up the media book of Bride of Reanimator, which I've never seen before. I've seen the first one many times, and I've also seen uh, part three, Beyond Reanimator, a couple of times, but I've never actually had the chance to watch uh, this second movie. And I still haven't seen it yet, but uh, I will... I will do that very soon and you know like the first one you have two blu-rays with two different versions there's the r-rated version and the unrated version there's some artwork and the dvd which only contains the unrated version All written in German, as you can see, but you know that's what you expect if you buy a German media book. This is a very nice collector's edition. And last but not least, I got these two fantastic releases by Plain Archive. Plain Archive is a company by collectors for collectors. I mean, they really know how to come up with these beautiful packaging and all. And I, I didn't want to get this movie at first because I only own the Canadian Steelbook. But when I was ordering Melancholia, Mel Melancholia, uh, I thought, you know, I better get the, this one as well. So it's still shield, and of course, it's, it has this stew book on here and also a small booklet. And, uh, and it's, it's a beautiful release, I have to say. It looks absolutely beautiful. And Melancholia, I didn't have this movie on Blu-ray yet. I always wanted to get this because it's, it looks fantastic. This is um, When Worlds Collide. Von Trier style, you know. The the opening scene of this film looks fantastic. You have these very slow motion scenes. Let me show you what the uh, the inside looks like. The, the the first release. This is the second release, by the way. The first release has the uh, the, the steel book, but that one is out of print. I believe is it was limited to uh, five hundred, but it's out of print now. This only has a keep case, which doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it, it looks beautiful as well, as you can see here. And the stuff, you know, some stuff here. And an inside picture over here. And there's also a poster, this one. And here is the 
booklet. Nymphomaniac, I haven't seen this one yet. I really want to check that out. See how naughty it is. I heard it was very naughty. And there's one trier together with uh, Kiva Sutherland. The great thing about this is that it's written both in Korean, you know, Plain Archive is a Korean company, written both in Korean and underneath that it's written in English, so that's that's very nice. Fantastic release. By the way, my number is uh, 369 out of 1000, as you can see. And the wrestler is limited to 2000, and my, my number is uh, 817. So there you go. And that was it for my DVD and Blu ray update of May 2014. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.